this is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the ASUS ZenBook UX31, one of the first Ultrabooks. The Ultrabook is Intel's new initiative to bring MacBook-like air quality, slim good looks, and speed to the world of Windows PCs. The ZenBook UX31 is a 13.3 inch super slim and light ultra low voltage Windows 7 notebook. It's made entirely of aluminum. This is an aluminum deck right here. We have the glass trackpad, this capacitive trackpad, metal capped keys right here. And if we close it, you can see it has this swirl aluminum finish here, which is very attractive. It could be a little blinding in bright sunlight. Kind of a two tone thing. It's darker here. And we've got the light contrasting aluminum in the back hinge. We're also very brushed, nice finish. Smooth edges everywhere. And you can see it's incredibly thin. This is a third of an inch at the back, and tapers done almost nothing at the front, just like the MacBook Air. The bottom plate, also brushed aluminum, and ten teeny torque screws hold the bottom on. If you take that off, you can get access to the battery, which nominally is not user replaceable because you got to open it up with the ten torque screws, but not a big deal. It's a big 50 watt per hour battery, about 6800 milliamps inside, lithium ion polymer, and it takes up actually most of the space in here. The motherboard is quite small. Got some vent holes over here. On this side we have USB 2.0 port, combo 3.5 millimeter mic and headphone jack, full size SD card slot. And on this side we have a USB 3.0 sleep and charge port, awesome. A mini VGA port, comes with a VGA full size adapter. Micro HDMI, a little bit of a pain, but nowadays with a lot of smartphones having micro HDMI and some Android tablets, you might actually have an adapter or a cable handy for that. There's your power port right here, and a little LED light that indicates if the system is on and sleeping and so forth. It's absolutely gorgeous, this notebook. It, it, it actually outclasses the MacBook Air for looking a bit more chic, exciting, sexy, very metal. Now, Asus at one point was thought of as something of a budget computer maker, but they've gone into serious gaming notebooks, and now they're doing these really high-profile, gorgeous design ultrabooks here. In fact, they've outclassed so far the Acer S3, which has a plastic design, and also the upcoming Lenovo 300, U300S, which is, and it has that U300 kind of look, the book design, but it doesn't have the chic metal quality kind of stuff here in the high-end CPU inside. And also, in terms of packaging, you can see here we have the box. And it's a rather large box. Attractive, solid, good looking stuff. You here. open it up and you get a couple of extra goodies, something that Asus is fond of doing. And they also like brown, those of you who own an EPAD transformer know that. So the, the slip case is kind of brown, bronzy thing. It's a ballistic nylon on the outside. You've got leather flap here. And it's very slim, kind of like that manila envelope kind of thing. Nice, soft, padded, kind of micro suede stuff inside, so it's just a little protective case. Now that notebook is serious solid metal. You could actually hurt somebody with it, so it doesn't need a whole lot of extra protection when you're carrying it around. The Seuss Law also includes one year of accidental damage protection. Inside we have another little pouch right here, and we've got the USB Ethernet adapter, which looks pretty much just like Apple's, only in black. And we have the VGA adapter, that's the mini VGA to VGA included with the unit. And in here, underneath where the computer is, you've got a nice little box, sort of like where they do the transformer. It says ZenBook over here. You get a cable tie, you get a user manual warranty information, all that kind of stuff. No recovery DVDs are inside the box. You need to make your own. There is a recovery partition on the device. It uses about 8 gigs of storage. Once you make your recovery disk, you can delete that partition. Now we'll compare the ASUS to the MacBook Air, which really is kind of the model in some ways for the Intel Ultrabook initiative. And you can see they have just about the same footprint. Both remarkably thin on the front. Both have little rubber feet on the bottom. Both come tapering to a wedge. And from the back, the Mac has a little black finish here, but this is just straight silver. So very similar. And now if we compare them open, you can see the similarities are still there. Both have very large trackpads, 13.3 inch displays. They both have gloss displays, a 
The ASUS looks a little glossier to, to my eye. The ASUS has a brighter display. It's a 450 nit brightness display, which is incredibly bright. And you can see we've got Apple's fantastic keyboard here with the black plastic keys coming out of the unibody aluminum finish, whereas we've got inset keys here on the ASUS, about the same size keys. Where the ASUS falters compared to the MacBook Air is viewing angles. If you're looking straight on, the display looks awesome. Crisp, sharp, good colors. Could use some calibration. You can use the Windows calibration tool to bring up the reds. It veers towards the blue a little bit, but side-to-side uh, -side viewing angles, typical TN panels, you, you do lose some, but you could have somebody sitting next to you to watch a movie, for example, but the up-down angle can make a very big difference, so you find yourself tilting this to get it to just the right angle to look good. The ASUS comes with a very compact charger. It's got about eight or nine feet of cable on it, and this is sort of, again, styled like the Apple charger. Battery is good for about six hours of battery life doing a mix of tasks, say, internet browsing, email, working with office documents, that kind of thing. And if you want to play at full-length movies that you put on a hard drive or a USB flash drive, then we expect to at least make it through probably five hours or so based on our tests of movie playback. The machine has surprisingly good audio. It says audio by Bang & Olufsen Ice Power. And my gosh, you know, usually ultra-light notebooks, they don't have very good sound. This thing sounds amazing. And we'll fire up Windows Media Player so you can hear what I mean. And that's at about half volume right now. And you do get on-screen indicators for both volume and brightness, which is nice. You can see the half circle moving around. Interesting user interface. So, very good speakers. The speakers actually fire from underneath the keyboard and out through the vent. And speaking of the vent, when the display is open, the vents actually have plenty of breathing room here. better design, actually, than the MacBook Air and MacBook Pro, whose vents seem to always be a bit blocked by the display and the display hinge. As part of the Ultrabook initiative, these machines come with either a ULV Core i5 or i7 CPU. We're looking at the i5 version, and that's the Intel 2557M. You can also get this with an i7, uh, but you're not going to gain that much performance for the price difference there. Uh, this is running at 1.7 gigahertz and it is 3 megs of level 2 cache versus 1.8 gigahertz with the Core i7 ULV and 4 megs of level 2 cache. Not as much of a difference as there was, say, on the, the full Core i5 i7 CPUs a generation ago where you got a lot more performance bang for the buck. Still, this guy is $10.99 for the Core i5 with the 128 gig SSD. And if you want that i7, you can get that in a Deluxo package where you upgrade to a 256 gig SSD and you get the Core i7 CPU. And then there's also a middle one. Sticks with the Core i5 CPU and gets you that 256 gig SSD if you just want more storage. Speaking of the SSD, the 128 gig is made by A-Data. It uses the Samforce controller. It's SATA 3. It's one of the first SATA 3 machines, and the speeds on the drive are phenomenal. And it works with Intel's Instanon technology, so the thing boots incredibly quickly. In fact, I'll show you that right now. Now the machine is completely off, and we're going to boot it up. Power button's integrated right there at the keyboard. It has a little LED white light on it. So does the wireless button. And we're that quick to the sign-on screen. And as you can see here, we've got face recognition running. It uses the VGA webcam up top here to do face recognition. And now here's a Windows desktop, and it's going to be usable almost instantly. Really nice. No waiting around for two minutes for your machine to boot up. And since this uses Intel's Instant On technology, and there's a little control panel right up here for a little widget, rather, to enable or disable that, I really don't know why you'd ever want to turn that off, you can just close the lid, wait long enough for it to go to sleep, and resume. 
that quick. PC Mark Vantage scores are excellent, same as the MacBook Air 13-inch, actually, with the Core i5 CPU. Talking about 10,000 on the PC Mark Vantage score, that, that's very powerful. With this LAX is dedicated graphics. It uses Intel HD 3000 integrated graphics, which were more than adequate to work with Photoshop to play back movies, including HD movies, that kind of thing, but it's not for you serious gamers. You're not going to be paying Battlefield 3 or Crisis 2 on that. Another big plus for the display is, is the resolution. It's 1600 by 900 pixels. That's quite high resolution and much better than the usual 1366 by 768 that we see on notebooks all the way up to 15.6 inches. That's even higher than the MacBook Air, which is 1440 by 900 pixels. And it, it certainly is wonderful for productivity. You can have two windows open at once. You can more easily work with Photoshop images. Speaking of Photoshop, we're going to launch it now. So pretty good launch time there. Then we're going to open up a image file in JPEG format that is 14 megapixel resolution from the SD. And there we've actually got a photograph of the battery that's inside this unit. So you can see it's a 6840 milliamp hour, 50 watt per hour lithium ion battery pack. Zooming in. Zooming out, no problem. Let's apply a filter to this. Do an unsharp mask. 55%. That's just like that. Image rotation. Just like that. Undo. Undo again. Very fast. Absolutely fine for Photoshop, certainly fine for Office documents, Internet, that kind of thing. It's a very powerful computer, again, for anything that doesn't require dedicated graphics like 3D gaming. Machine has 4 gigs of RAM. That RAM is soldered onto the motherboard. It's underneath the SSD drive. It's not upgradable. 4 gigs is fine for most any task you're going to do with Windows unless you're doing serious video editing and you need more RAM. But for casual video editing, again, this is just fine. Windows Movie Maker, that kind of thing. Works well. Much ado has been made about the trackpad on this notebook, and I can tell you that after a firmware update, now, for some reason the ASUS update service doesn't automatically tell you about that firmware update. You have to go to their website and look for it, get 2.06 as of this video recording, and then update the driver. The driver will be pushed to you for the trackpad, and it becomes much more manageable. No more erratic behavior. Two-finger gestures like scrolling work just fine, so it's still not as great as a MacBook Air, but really nothing as good as the Mac trackpad. It, it's, it's perfectly usable and tolerable now. Keys here, you can see you've got your FN keys up top, standard stuff for controlling your video, your audio, your wireless, and very nice, roomy, large size keys. They have a reasonable amount of travel, too, despite the fact that this is a thin notebook. One thing, though, you do have to have a firm touch when you're typing. You need to travel all the way to the end of your stroke. If you don't do that, you might not register key presses. That kind of thing drives you crazy and you're a very light touch typist. This is probably not the notebook for you. The trackpad, like the MacBook Air, is actually the clicky type. You press down and it does click. That's something that I prefer. I, I hate the clickless trackpads. How about video playback? Now we're playing a 1080p high profile MPEG-4 video that we've got stored on the internal hard drive. Absolutely no problem. Now, it's higher resolution than the display is this video, but obviously if you want to use the micro HDMI out and play this to your TV or a big monitor, there you go, no problem. Likewise, YouTube playback, anything like that, smooth. The ASUS ZenBook UX31 and the UX21 11.6 inch are available right now. They all have Wi-Fi 802.11bgn, that's single band Wi-Fi, 2.4 gigahertz, unfortunately no 5 gigahertz there, and it also has Bluetooth. You get two USB ports, one of them is 3.0, combined headphone mic jack, SD card slot, and the little dongle to use. Ethernet, there is no internal optical drive, there is no room for such thing. This starts at $10.99 for the Core i5 with 120 gig SSD, and it goes up from there if you want a 256 gig SSD or a Core i7, you can get that for more money. And the UX21 11.6 inches priced similarly. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website for the full review of the ASUS Ultrabook, the ZenBook UX31.